Hey guys, here's the next wave of those non-transforming action figure sized Megazords from Hasbro. This wave is all Mighty Morphin, for better or worse. The VHS style packaging is a lot of fun. Here is the Tiger Zord in Warrior Mode and the Mega Tiger Zord from Season 2. You have to put on his shoulder pads. Eh, come on, get on there. Ah, there we go. And then he holds the Firebird. Just like that. Just about zero paint on the back, which isn't really surprising. I wish Mega Tiger Zord could have had a little more paint for the lion, but they look good from the front, and that's probably how you mostly be looking at them, right? So there you have the Tiger Swords. And then we have the black and gold Mega Zord and Dragon Zord in battle mode. I guess I could open one of these boxes on camera, pull the thingy at the bottom, and then it slides out like that. On the inside, there's a sky, and then on the other side, you get the VHS. And the figures are wrapped in tissue paper. These guys look pretty good. The black and gold Megazord looks like it has more paint apps than the original did. And kind of the same deal with the Dragon Sword, even though it's a different Megazord. But I'll show you what I mean. Look at the legs. Sabertooth Tiger has eyes and a nose. They got the wheel on this one. Different shades of yellow and blue. Triceratops, the eyes. Are the horns just backwards on my release, or were they all like that for the original? Triceratops also has more paint on the back, too. Dragon Zord has silver hands instead of black, and gold where the yellow is on Megazord. Overall, I think it's a pretty good looking wave. So here's what we've got for Mighty Morphin so far, Season 1. Season 2, with Thunder Megazord. They also did Ninjor, Lost Galaxy, and uh, Ninjor's cousin, Ninjacon. They're a decent size for Lightning Collection and for model kits. Mia and I are actually on our way to Morphicon right now, so I can't make a fancy video with these like I wanted to, but here's a look at the previous video if you missed it. Hey guys, here are the Hasbro 7-inch Megazords. I really like these. I made a thing for each one of these. Let's start with Thunder Megazord. It's Rock and Roll! Some people noticed previously that there's the original Megazord standing in the explosion instead of the thunder. No, that's not a mistake on my end. That's actually how they did the show. In the first half of season two, you might have noticed you never see the thunder Megazord and the monster in the same shot. And if you look closely, you can see the original Megazord in the explosions and the smoke. I would say that passes my let's make a thing test, right? It's actually pretty convincing as an actual suit from the show. Did anyone happen to catch how I made this look like a season two battle? All right, let's take a look at Mighty Morphin Megazord. Megazord activated. <laughs> oh man, he's getting ready to throw pumpkins at us. <laughs> ah, we need the power sword. Hey ya! The Lost Galaxy Megazord looks really good. I had to use sticky stuff to actually have him hold the condor that way. And, and he will hold it like that, but it's a shame they couldn't have just given us a peg so he could actually hold it properly. But anyway, here's this video. Condor Galactazord! You'll never escape the Lost Galaxy! Fire! Fire! These are a pretty good size for Serpentera. Ah! And here's a quick thing with Ninjor. Evil makes me so angry! 
Behold the power of Ninja! And a big thank you and shout out to James for sending these over before I was able to find them on my own. Thanks, James. These Megazords are seven inches tall. They go very well with Lightning Collection Goldar. The other Lightning Collection monsters are quite a bit bigger. Here are the three Megazords next to each other. And here are the monsters. And Perantis Head will be joining them sooner or later. I appreciate what they do with the packaging. The box art is made to look like VHS tapes. When you open the box, the cardboard insert is made to look like a VHS tape. Mighty Morphin Season 1, Season 2, and here's Lost Galaxy. And the reason I said I appreciate that, here's one of my tapes from back in the day. I actually used to do that. I'm sure many of you guys did too. I recorded everything on VHS, and then I would, of course, draw on the tapes, because that's what I do. <laughs> really, really cool box art. Thumbs up for that. Overall, I really love these figures. As far as paint goes, though, so far I've only painted my Thunder Megazord, and not the whole thing, but, you know, I think the places that needed it most I've done. My gold marker that is linked in the video description really matches the gold they used very well. Like, I kind of wonder what would it have cost them, and or us, I guess, uh, to include a sticker sheet for the legs, even. A lot of this is easy enough to do on your own, though. Just do it carefully. What a big difference when you can see all the detail. It's there, you just have to bring it out with some paint. Yeah, there's really no paint at all on the back. I'm gonna just add a little bit. I'm trying to do a little bit of a wash here, make the Firebird stand out a bit more. It needs it. The back looks ugly now, but I'll clean it up in a bit with a Q-tip dipped in a little bit of alcohol. Right now I'm working on the metallic green, which I'm doing in thin layers. <laughs> I, I really have a thing with green on this Megazord. It needs the green. It drives me crazy when it's missing the green. Oh, the, the Bandai America release uh, in 94, the Thunder Megazord that was missing the green everywhere, drove me crazy. It's got to have the green. I think it's pretty crazy just how convincing this seven inch action figure is as the actual show suit. Like this really feels like you're watching the show here. But this is all just the action figures, the Lightning Collection Pudgy Pig and the 7-inch Thunder Megazord, which isn't part of the Lightning Collection line. I I mean, it, it looks so good at the same time. I kind of wish for, you know, $16 that it could be a few dollars more and have more paint and articulation, make it part of the Lightning Collection line. It's, it's like, it's so close. It really looks so good. But the articulation is is almost not even really there. You know, it, it doesn't do a whole lot. I was able to make it do enough, but yeah. I wish this could be a little bit fancier without costing a whole lot more. Like just a little more silver on the legs and a little bit more green on the arms and that it, it'd be pretty close. All right, maybe I will go over articulation at the end. So, I mean, this is all the legs do. There's not a lot to cover, but I know somebody will want to know. So I'll, I'll, I'll put it here. That's it. Uh, the arms can do that. They can go all the way around. You're, you're definitely not buying these for a super posable figure. You know, like the head can turn a little bit. I don't know what the thought was with the black around the eyes like that. It does make it look a little bit like a bootleg. You could turn the wrist 360. Megazord includes the power sword, but not the Mastodon shield. And that that's about it for him. He doesn't move anywhere else. Then there's Thunder Megazord. Thunder Megazord actually has the least articulation of the three. And giving him some extra paint really does help. Like, that's all the arms do. I mean, they, they can still spin around, but, yeah, the legs, they don't really go anywhere. You can turn the wrist, you can turn his head. I will say, being able to turn the head on a Megazord really adds a lot. But that is what he does. 
Then we've got Lost Galaxy Megazord. The Condor just pegs onto the back. I think Galaxy Megazord wins as far as leg and arm articulation go. The legs are actually pretty good on him. And the arms as well. Dino Megazord's also okay. Thunder Megazord just really doesn't go anywhere. Again, you can twist the wrists and the head. I wish the hands weren't so solid though. Like, I I'm sure you're gonna break this sword eventually if you're not careful. But then Ninjor's hands are a lot softer and easy to get the sword in and out. I wish they could have done that for all the Megazords. Even though I've got a small list of things I wish could have been a little bit better, I still think these are fantastic. We'll see you at Paramorphicon.